Sanitage. It's not the first time New Zealand has led the way in groundbreaking innovations. With his number eight wire attitude so commonly found here, Joe Lang set out to build his guitars. A perfectionist as he is, he would often find himself frustrated along the way. His ongoing quest for perfection would often impose another challenge. As a result, he's produced the most technologically advanced guitar to date, crafted in beautiful cowrie wood. Cowrie stumps can be found throughout New Zealand's farming pastures. Carbon dating has proved these to be over 35,000 years old. Often burnt and left to rot, these stumps have found many new uses in the furniture and tourist industries. Joe Lang, however, had something a little different in mind. What we are looking for is a slab of swamp cowrie that has a beautiful pattern in it. Now you will see here, this is a root structure. You can see still the side of the, of the roots. It's, it's a real mess. And out of this mess, we will make one of our Lancaster guitars. You've got lots of cracks sitting inside the wood and it needs to be filled up. How do you fill it up? Well, we use injection needles. We fill it in. It takes weeks and weeks and weeks to fill it in with an epoxy, with a liquid glass, till it is totally solid. Um, the problem with the slab of wood is the cowrie gum is very soft, so the moment that we route it or we mill it, your router bit will clock up straight away. It's a nightmare to work with. And then when the epoxy is sitting inside one of those holes and you hit this with your router bit, your router bit goes blunt. So you're in a no-win situation, but I tell you what man, it looks flipping fantastic. Sweet and tight. An opportunity arose here to help Dad because he's he's always inventing one thing or another, and he's, he gets a bit too busy for himself. So, uh, and here I am doing these bits and pieces. You see, Let's... I've got a template here, and I will route this on my baby. And I love this machine, man. This thing is probably I don't know 80 years old. I have no idea. I bought it for a few hundred bucks. I had no idea what it was, but it sounded okay. And now it's the best thing that I ever bought in my life. I use it as a milling machine, as a routing machine, and as a drill. So now, man, I tell you what, for no money in the world, I like to sell this machine. I love it. After it's been sprayed, it um, takes a couple of days to dry, and at this stage I uh, check it over and I look, if, I look for faults or any bubbles or anything like that that might show up. And basically what I do then is I sand it down. Once it's been sanded down to a nice dull surface, that can be going to the buffing department, which is right here. <laughs> Not very far actually, so um, now this process has to be done at least five to six times. Well, hopefully this one should be alright. So then I'll go to the polishing machine. Or a buffer, really. And as you can see, it buffs up. And 
it may look like it's finished but it's not you may see little bumps and here's that it takes me at least a half a day to polish one up some are harder than others obviously nobody would engrave my logos inside my headstock so I made a ridiculous step to buy a machine that normally costs twenty or thirty thousand dollars I had absolutely no idea how the thing works I had no idea how the software works and nobody tells you so uh, I managed to um, work it out together with Denny and hours and hours of swearing we managed to make it go so it's a ridiculous investment for twenty or thirty next but I had to do it I make the plastic big cards that we use for our kit sets and uh, the rings copper plated and chrome plated beautiful well, almost a year's work all up here we have another example of one that's ready and um, yeah and from this stage well then it goes to the back upstairs and it gets uh, made into a proper guitar to complement his beautiful cowrie guitars Joe looked long and hard for exceptional pickups, often to be disappointed by their performance, cheap design and hum. There had to be a better way. I made maybe a hundred different pickups, and number hundred was worse than number five. And to be quite honest, I didn't get anywhere. Thick wire, thin wire, stronger magnets, weaker magnets, longer magnets, shorter magnets, uh, you name it, shielding, printed circuit boards, little capacitors in them, you don't know what you're doing really, you know. It's like trial and error and using your ears. Mm. And all of a sudden on a Sunday morning I plugged it in in my Fender amplifier sitting here behind me. And I had that feeling that John Britton had with his motorbike, you know, I felt like a little John Britton. <laughs> We've got a printed circuit board here with eight magnets and three on the top and that's great because if you're a lead guitar player you don't like to have any dead spots between the magnets. That's quite handy if you like to have it a little bit darker or a little bit crisper or cleaner we can change the capacitor for you. The advantage of a very low K pot is that you can use with a Lancaster kit set or a guitar uh, a lead of maybe 100 meters without any loss of tone or treble. The tone is incredible clean and clear and uh, you have no hum. A normal pickup is approximately 6000 to 10000 ohm. So you can imagine this is a totally different system than most pickups on the market. So now you have a kit set that you can fit into basically any type of fender and uh, we are now designing also humbuckers. As Lancaster guitars slowly find their way to the public, they're often received with great admiration. Magazines worldwide rave about the wood, exceptional pickups, craftsmanship and price. The Germans are so punkly. They knew that the thickness of my neck was at the 12th fret something like 21.4 millimeters. Well, bucker if I know. <laughs> I only make the bloody thing, you know. Double page spread in a New York magazine, I couldn't afford it, you know, so uh, that was great promotion. A little while ago uh, I had a phone call from a journalist in Holland and said, well, Joe, Jen Ackerman, you know, ex-Focus, and of course I know Jen Ackerman very well because of Pierre, being his drummer and also my old drummer, likes to play uh, on your guitar doing a tour in Europe with Steve Lukita from Toto, a Jimi Hendrix tribute tour and he loves to have your guitar. One guy in New York, he uh, bought five of my guitars. One day he had more guitars than I had. Uh, two pickups, three pickups, uh, tremolo, no tremolo. He wanted the whole blooming lot. Jan Ackerman or Jan Fischer, Joe makes no distinction. Every guitar is built with great care and precision. 
money can I spend on advertising so uh, by the time that everybody knows about it I'm probably dead while filming this documentary Joe took delivery of specially designed amplifiers and is experimenting with wireless pickups I couldn't keep up with them the problem is if you like to play Can you please start again? Is that poking the thing straight into my eye? <laughs> Money, everybody's happy. 